Welcome to Arches National Park. This trip was jam-packed with amazing views and some pretty unforgettable experiences. I hope you enjoy watching. The drive into Arches National Park is stunning. You start by weaving back and forth up this road that hugs the giant red rock cliffs. Honestly, the drive alone through Arches National Park is absolutely worth it. If you're not a hiker, this drive gives you some pretty amazing views. There are also so many pull-offs that you can stop to really take in the scenery. This road winds its way through the park, giving you a lot of opportunity to explore and really soak up this park without too much effort. Arches National Park boasts that they have over 2,000 natural stone arches and a network of hiking trails totaling up to 30 miles in length. These trails range from easy to more strenuous hikes. This provides options for visitors of all skill levels. We are about to do the Windows Trail. You can already see one right ahead. And I believe the other one is like right in this area. So this is our first hike inside Arches National Park. We're really excited. It's been a while since we've been hiking in here. So here we go. Most of the trail is like this. And then you have the opportunity to hike up to the arch if you want, where you get a little bit of elevation gain. But other than that, really easy, simple trail. During the Jurassic period, this area was a tropical environment inhabited by dinosaurs. There are fossilized tracks and remnants of these ancient creatures that can be found all around the park. We have the north window, south window, and turret arch. We're gonna start with north and south window. Brock is going to lead the way. Beautiful sunny day. Doesn't look like we're gonna get much rain today, if any at all. So that's lovely. So nice to be here, be outside, soaking in this incredible beauty. These arches and other geological features in the park, they were formed over millions of years through the erosion of the sandstone by wind and water. The process of erosion continues to shape the landscape today, creating brand new arches and also changing the ones that exist. There are a lot less people here than there are in the summer months or the spring months or fall. In my opinion, this is one of the best times to visit this national park because there's a lot less people. The area around Arches National Park has been inhabited by humans for over 10,000 years. Native American tribes such as the Utes and the Paiutes once lived in this region and left behind rock art and other archaeological evidence of their presence here. Over there we have turret arch and then I think just around here is south window. So let's go check those out. Pretty amazing. All right, so we have turret arch clearly right ahead, south arch this way. There are conservation efforts that are ongoing to protect this park's natural resources and ensure that future generations can continue to enjoy its beauty. So from here you can see Balanced Rock, I believe it's right back there. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see it. There is the north window, there is the south window both of which you can see from the road as you're driving in, so keep an eye out for that. And now we are heading to Turret Arch. This park receives over 1.6 million visitors annually, making it one of the most popular national parks in the U.S. Due to its popularity, Arches National Park has recently implemented a reservation system. 
This begins April 1st and is discontinued October 31st. Just beautiful here. Great weather for hiking and the sunshine feels so good. Reservations can be made in advance and are recommended to ensure that you can access the park. So this is a super short hike, great for families or people who are wanting to explore but not wanting to do a huge hike. There's a lot to see in this little area, so you could spend a couple hours exploring here if you want without really much effort at all. Lots of arches, lots of red rock, spires, everything. So this is a great spot to check out if you're in Arches National Park. Okay guys, we just got to the Fiery Furnace Viewpoint Trail. There's also a hike here. Um, just know that in advance, you need to get a permit from the ranger stations two days in advance to be able to do the full hike. If not, you can do the Viewpoint Trail. That's what we're gonna do, very easy. So here we go. The Fiery Furnace hike is approximately two miles long, but due to the rugged and maze-like terrain, it can take around two to three hours to complete. The hike is rated strenuous and requires scrambling over rocks, navigating narrow passages, and sometimes squeezing through tight spaces. Because of its challenging terrain and potential for getting lost, visitors are required to either join a ranger-led tour or obtain a permit and a map for self-guided exploration. These layers form as water seeps through the rock carrying dissolved minerals with it. When the water evaporates, it leaves behind these minerals and create these white bands or veins that you observe in these rock formations. Well, I'm definitely disappointed that we didn't get to hike this because it looks absolutely amazing here, but I still think that it's worth it to stop by here and at least check out this viewpoint because it is really, really pretty. And it's probably safer for most people to experience this area of the park by the viewpoint than to actually go into Fiery Furnace. Sounds like you need to be pretty experienced with hiking and navigating red rocks and canyons and stuff like that in order to go out into this area. So still very beautiful. Would recommend stopping and seeing the viewpoint. We're gonna keep heading on to one of our last, if not the last hike of today inside Arches National Park. Really quick, I just wanted to share the sponsor of today's video, Discover Cars. Discovercars.com is an online platform that will help you find the best price of rental car for your location and your dates. They're able to provide these discounts by negotiating directly with the rental car companies, and they work with over 500 companies, so they have a ton of options. They will provide you with a completely transparent quote with exactly how much the car is going to be, all fees included, for that time that you want to rent the car. Booking a rental car through discovercars.com is extremely easy. You can click the link in my description, it'll take you to their website, you plug in the dates that you want, the location that you want to pick up the car, and then search for the car that you want. They have all kinds of options from compact cars, economy cars, regular size sedans, all the way up to convertibles or large SUVs. So you can choose the perfect car for you and the situation that you need. Once you book the car, they will send you a voucher and then you will just show up to the car rental, provide the voucher and pick up the car that you booked. Just to be sure that you are all covered and safe on your trip, they do offer a full coverage package. And this will include anything from theft, from break-ins to car accidents, or any sort of deductibles that may go along with those sort of incidents. If you're going to be traveling in the near future and you know that you're going to need a rental car, go ahead and go to the description and hit the link so that you can find the best price for a rental car wherever you are traveling to. Thank you to Discover Cars for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to hiking in Arches National Park. Sand dune arch. Hike through deep sand to find this hidden arch between tall sandstone walls. Stay tuned, folks. I gotta get my snacks ready. We just got to the trailhead for the sand dune arch or sandy arch, and we're about to hike it. There's a couple 
other arches on this trail as well. It should be about a two and a half mile loop trail. So let's go check it out. Before visiting Arches National Park, it's essential to be prepared. Be sure to bring plenty of water, sunscreen, and footwear for hiking. You should also be mindful of this desert environment. And be sure to practice leave no trace principles to minimize our impact on this fragile ecosystem. We walked past a couple that said, this arch is great in the summer because it stays nice and cool in here. In the winter, it also stays nice and cool, so it's a bit chilly in here right now. Sand Dune Arch is nestled within a sandy alcove, surrounded by some pretty amazing sandstone fins. This creates a very secluded oasis in this desert landscape. That was the first arch of this hike, and now we're gonna go find some more arches. Yay! And hopefully some sunshine. Oh, oh. So if you have children, this is a great hike. <laughs> Lots of room to play. Ooh, the wind's picking up a little. That is chilly. All right. We just did Sand Dune Arch here, and now we're going to Broken Arch. This hike so far looks like there's not much elevation gain at all. love all this red rock. It's so peaceful and quiet here. We get a lot of red rock in St. George, but somehow here it feels very different. These juniper trees do smell really, really good. Mmm, so good. Chocolate brownie. Goya. Goya. Delicious. Liquid brownie. Put in your pocket, you're ready to roll. Arch is just right there, around this little corner. Definitely a great little hike for families or again, for people who don't wanna do like a super long intensive hike. One thing that I want to touch on is that it's very, very sandy. So that is something to keep in mind. Right now, it just rained yesterday, so the sand is damp and really easy to walk on. But when it's really dry, every step um, feels like you're putting a lot of effort into it. There is a lot of exposure on this trail, lots of sun. So if you're hiking in the summer months, be aware of that. Bring water, snacks, and take breaks in the shade if you need it. But look at this, we made it, just like that. This loop trail passes beneath Broken Arch allowing for a very up-close and intimate experience. I believe there's another arch over here. So let's keep hiking. The LaSalle Mountains way, way back there. I'm just covered in clouds, so you can't see them, but looks like they got some snow last night. All right, we see Tapestry Arch right back here. We're gonna try to make our way all the way there. And then I believe we're going to loop through the campground. A little public service announcement. When you're hiking in the desert, be sure to drink water. You might not feel like you're getting dehydrated, but just the dry environment and the sun and the sweating can really dehydrate you quickly. So remember to drink your water. The trail continues on to Tapestry Arch. Tapestry Arch is located slightly off the main trail and is known for its delicate, lacy appearance. Brock's already up there, relaxing. It's said to have intricate tapestry pattern formed by weathering and erosion on its surface.
Now we get to walk through all this stuff. Oh man, that protein shake really does him wonders. Wow, I've never seen him with so much energy. Holy snap! Whoa! This campground is in a really beautiful location. We're just enjoying this beautiful hike, soaking it all up. When you're hiking here in this area, be sure to look out for rocks like this. That help that will help you indicate where the trail is. A lot of the time the trail weaves through like dirt areas and sandstone rock and it's really easy to lose it. So keep an eye out for these little rock formations that will help point you in the right direction. So you can see one right up there and that helps you know where to go. Just a little tip for hiking in Moab and Orches, Canyonlands or any like red rock deserty area. Wow! Look at this. This is beautiful. Little slot canyon. Kind of cool. Woo. Oh, this is so cool. I'm glad we did this loop. This area is really neat. All these like red rock formations and we're hiking right through the middle. It reminds me probably like a small sneak peek of what you would get in Fiery Furnace. I'm sure Fiery Furnace is like a lot more of this, but this is pretty cool. We are here at Park Avenue. This is probably the last hike that we will do today. It's supposed to be a really short one, about 0.9 of a mile out and then 0.9 back. I don't know that we will do all of it, but it is so beautiful here. Take a look around. It's worth it just to stop and come to the viewpoint here. Yeah, look at this. Park Avenue is located on the southern section of Arches National Park. It's near the park's entrance. The trailhead is easily accessible right off the main road, making it a very popular choice for visitors of all ages and all abilities. The trail begins with many, many rock stairs that lead you into the valley below. Keep this in mind as you make your descent into this little canyon. This means that your hike out will be more difficult than your hike in. Something to be aware of in the warm or hot months hiking in Arches National Park. The tree. This is the first like smooth part of the trail. Up until this point, you really want to watch your step. It's really rocky. But there's a little bit of sand here. Look how steep this is. These are huge walls. Super cool. Give you a little 360. Another huge one over there. That's it for this little trail for today. We are going to head back to the campground, cook up some dinner and hang out and enjoy the rest of our time in Moab. Let's go. If you want to do more outdoor adventures like this one, but you don't have a lot of experience outdoors and you don't know where to start, don't worry. I created a beginner guide to the outdoors to give you all the tips and things that you need to know to have a fun and successful time outside. Spending time outside has truly changed my life and I would love to help as many people as I can get outdoors and connected to the natural world. So if this sounds interesting to you, the link for this ebook book is in the description below. Just incredible here. There's nothing like it anywhere else. Such a unique place. I understand why so many people come here. That is going to wrap up this video. Thank you for watching. 
be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my video next week where we camp out in Arches National Park and we may or may not experience snow. I'll see you in the next video. These babies look delicious. The smell of campfire is oh, so good.